All right, welcome to a ho 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 Merry Christmas Friday night. Um, thank you for joining us. My name is Jim Hobbs, and uh, somewhere on this screen is some other elves. My carnivore co host Brian Damage Forsyth of the band Kicks and Rhino Bucket, and returning, um, after a few weeks getting ready for the uh, Christmas season, I take it. But we have Brian Santa Claus Shanker, uh, also known as the uh, Meat Tribe uh, sales provider, is back to join us this uh, Christmas Friday. So welcome back, Brian. Glad to have you back. Thanks. It's actually been more than a few weeks. September 30th. September was the last time I I, I, I appeared. Wow, that was a while. Wow. Yeah. I did not. Well, you're still missed. Okay. You're, you're <laughs> Thank you. Missed. It did seem that long, though, to be honest with you. So, well, listen, you picked a perfect day to to join us. You picked a perfect night to join us. Uh, it's Friday night. Tomorrow is Christmas Eve. And then Sunday, we all celebrate Christmas. Uh, and so with Christmas comes tradition, both in foods, both in watching movies. So I'm glad you joined us because poor Brian, every time I do these lists, he's got to do them by himself. Uh, <laughs> So, so now, you, hopefully between the, the two of us, uh, we can have some fun. The three of us can have some fun. But between you two, I'm going to give you guys the 15 – I want you guys to name the 15 best Christmas movies of all time. Uh, oh, they have to be the best? Well, let me – there. I'll, I'll, <laughs> let me let me preference. I'll, I'll, I'll read the rules. So I'll define a Christmas movie. A great Christmas movie will not only make the grade for the test of time, but it can become a beloved part of a person's life. You ask 15 people which is their favorite holiday film, and you may get 15 different titles. So, however, we believe that the 15 that we have on this list are the 15 most watched. And so this – and it don't have to be actually a Christmas movie movie it's just a movie people watch or associate during christmas time so brian do you have your uh helping elf in the room to help you with these you, yeah random, is random is random elf with you yes okay, all right in fact she already been helping she wrote down some stuff but i actually these are ones i knew except for one I, it's like is this a christmas movie all right, so go ahead, Brian. We're gonna let you go first. We'll back. So, Brian, name a movie. Brian Forsight, name a movie. Uh, name one. Yeah, name one. You can keep naming them until you're wrong, and then we'll go to Shanker. Uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. One of my favorites, and it's a true holiday with Trent and I. And that's number eleven. So, Ooh. good job. All right, keep going. Uh, Christmas Story, of course. Christmas story, of course. Uh, let's see. Sorry, they have this thing so spread out. But uh, so Christmas story is number three. Came, oh, you know, it is. Yes, so, on there. Yep. You know so what year it came out? Do you know what year it came out? I do not. Nineteen eighty-three. Oh, okay. I I just know that my uh, my younger brother never misses that. Every year he watches it. <laughs> I always. Yes, I think Go ahead. I usually see I usually see like a part of it as I'm flipping channels. It'll be somewhere. <laughs> yeah, typically TBS has it on. I think 24 hours nonstop on Christmas Day. They just they just okay a marathon of that same movie over and over again. And we used to watch it over and over again in our household. So it's on there. All right, well you go again. You got two. So right now it's two nothing. Shanker hasn't even had a chance to go. Well, these are all ones that I actually. Uh... Well, those are ones I knew. <laughs> is um is Bad Santa? Is that the one with Dan Aykroyd? Oh, did you say bad? Are you going to go with that answer, Bad Santa? Because it just may be on here. Yeah, it's just a yeah. It's the name of a movie. I, I wasn't sure which one it was. Which one is it, Dan Aykroyd? Where he's the drunk Santa. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's not an actual Christmas movie. <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. I don't think Bad Santa made the list, Brian. So let me just check on. I got one more page to go through. It did not make the list. So, Brian Shanker, you get a chance to go. Okay. So, uh, I've got I've got so many good ones. I don't want to count myself out. But uh, let's go with Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Uh, that did not make the top 15. Really? Hold on, I, I see that. I said that right out the gate. So hold on a second. Let me just make sure. Just, I don't remember seeing it. I'm checking. I'm checking. 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 I do not see it on here. Nope. It I didn't make the list. Did not make the list. All right. I got plenty more. But if we're switching over back yeah, to yeah, back, back, back to damage now. Damage. What you got? Um, Elf. Elf is one of my daughter's favorite movie. They watch every year, and Elf. <laughs> is on the list elf is number nine so it's up brian's up brian Forsyth's up three nothing right now so continue on brian okay um um i'm i'm, I'm, I'm hang on hang on hang on that's it is it is random elf is helping you so go ahead take her go ahead say she it says, she says die hard He's absolutely uh, correct. Number 14. You know, I was going to start with that one, but. <laughs> isn't, that like a, isn't that like an action movie or something? It is, but it, it's considered a Christmas movie because it takes time, takes takes place during that time. And so that that literally is one of every, one of a lot of people's traditions is to watch Die Hard during the Christmas season. Wow. Okay. I have to chime in here, though. Bruce Willis has been seen on camera saying that he says it's not a Christmas movie, but I disagree with that. I think it is a Christmas movie. We watch it every year. Yeah, yeah. it's a tradition. All right, Foresight, you want to you guess again? You're, you're up 3 nothing. <laughs> you don't even know. Uh. He's just, he's just been given the help list from uh, random help. No, no, no fair, <laughs> no fair. Uh, um, well, actually, this one I knew. Uh, Scrooge. Oh, he says Scrooge. Um, Scrooge. We talked about that last week. So I went to. It's not on the list. It's not on the list. Really? Let me just Was double it? check. It's. It's. Let me just make sure. There's one page is sticking here. Nope, it is not on the list. Okay. All right. You, all right, Shanker. Mr. Shanker, your go, brother. Home Alone. Home Alone, number number eight. And it might it and my grandson was watching the new there's a new home alone that he was watching this this morning. Uh that's Christmas? That's, yeah. Oh, okay. Came out in nineteen ninety, just so you guys know, nineteen ninety home alone. Oh, Brian, you're going to have to revisit some of these movies. I was right. already old by then. <laughs> <laughs> All right there, Mr. Shanker. What do you, you got another guess? It's a Wonderful Life. Number one. Ah, Number one. That's right. All right, three to two. You're, you can, this one for the tie. You can tie it up there, Mr. Shanker. Polar Express. Polar Express, I do believe, is on here. Yep, number twelve. Oh boy, it's three to three. We got a, we got ourselves a game. Go ahead. <laughs> there's, there's one I want to say, but I don't want to say it because I don't know. Um, oh, what is that one? Um, shoot, Kurt Russell's in it. Uh. Thanks. Hold on. Escape from New York. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, who is that? Or what? Hold on. Hang on. I'm cheating, but I'm just. I'm. I know the movie. I've got one, but I can't. I don't know the exact title. But... All right, Mr. Shane. Uh, Christmas on. Chronicles. Ooh. Christmas Chronicles with uh, Kurt Russell. And Goldie Hawn. That did not make the list. Wow. It's, oh. it's three. Hey, but hey, listen, you you get an A for effort, man. You went to Google 
All right, we're back to damage. Damage is three three. You can break the tie. Um, what if I don't have the exact title? Well, just tell uh -oh. us. Just tell us what you mean. We'll, we'll the judge will. Uh, it's Christmas, so we'll we'll gift it to you. Um, it's like a classic. It's the one miracle on whatever street. I can't remember miracle, the name. Of the street. Miracle on the thir on thirty fourth street. Oh, okay, I was gonna say forty third. It was like so, or forty second. That was just deluxe. No, so Miracle on Thirty Fourth came out. If you tell me what year, I'll give you another point. In uh, wasn't that like in the forties? Well, we gotta be a little bit more. Specific. You are correct, but pick a year. Gosh. 1947. Bingo! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. You Google and her friend. <laughs> yeah, 1947. All right, keep going, damage. You're up 4 3 now. Four and a half to three. <laughs> um, okay, these, these, uh, this one, I actually haven't seen this one, but, um, Daddy's Home too. Nope, that is not, that did not make the list. I, I, knew that was I got one now. All right. Go My ahead. turn? Yeah, go ahead there, Mr. Shanker. The Grinch. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's not on there. Really? It's not on there. Maybe they don't wow. count cartoons. Yeah, I don't think it's not on there. No, they had Polar uh -huh. Express on there. They had Polar Express. A lot Is of these, I'm going to give you some, a lot, a lot of these remaining ones are old i mean they're the 40s and 50s so like i said they're classics uh some but they're very old so give you a little clue you're tight you're you're no damage oh so i guess there's not gonna be any like charlie brown's christmas or any of that junk on there is there <laughs> oh man um we already asked that yeah um Ah, you know, it's so terrible with Christmas movies. Um, isn't there one? Um, what's the one? Ah, what can I think of the title? <laughs> uh, that's hilarious. What's the one? It's a classic one with the ghost of Christmas past and all that. That was the uh, that was uh, Scrooge, Ebenezer Scrooge, and that's not on the list. That's not on the list. Wow, that's crazy. All okay. right, we'll go, I Mr. Shanker. Mr. Shanker, you go. Go ahead. He's waving his hand. He, he's oh, he disappeared. All right, he's back. All right. Oh, I'm going in and out. Uh, you might have been thinking of a Christmas Carol. Is that? 1951 that is on the list good job there mr shanker how about nightmare before the nightmare before christmas that uh what was that uh yeah that's uh, that, that I don't, guy let me see tim burton tim burton yeah you said the nightmare before christmas that is, yeah yep that's on there 1994 and mr shanker has taken the lead how many is that so far I'm just uh, wondering. Yeah, what's it's the total five, hit list? It's uh, it's it's five to four and a half. So so nine fifth picks. You got six left. Six wow. left, and you're, and you're saying they're all like older. Well, there's not. I mean, not all of them are, but I'll I'll give you a clue. One of the newer ones has Hugh Grant in it, so I'll just give a clue to that. I don't know that, but one that what my wife was a tradition for her family, and we started doing it. Was the homecoming with the Waltons? I don't know if that would be on there. Yeah, it's not on there. My wife likes that one too, but no, that's not on there. Uh, all right, all right, back to you, damage. <laughs> I'm so terrible. Uh oh, I'm getting some help. Sorry. What? That's a Christmas. Say it. <laughs> she, she said, said "Say it." Say it. <laughs> <laughs> She's saying uh, um Bridget Jones diary. Uh that's a good no, it's not. It's not, but good guess. You strike it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Shanker, your your go. All right, another one that we watch in our household, Family Man with um Nicholas Cage. 
Yep, that's not on there. But uh, well, I mean, we just double check. I don't think it is, but uh, that's a good movie. Peggy likes that movie. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. If if damage doesn't, we'll go one more round. If you don't get it, then I'm just going to give them to you. So damage, your go. What was what what, what did your elf say? <laughs> it's not going to be on there. Jingle all the way. Is that what is that the is that your final answer? That yeah, that's yeah. It's not on there. I knew it. Was. <laughs> did, <laughs> did either one of us say the Santa Claus with um Tim Burton? No, no, the Santa Claus with uh what's his name from from Home Improvement Show? Uh yes, the Santa Claus, Tim Allen. That's who I meant. Tim Allen. That's on there. You just take it a commanding six to four and a half point lead there, Mr. Shanker. You want to I, I'm all out except I'm all out except for like the cartoons, the little drummer boy, Frosty, Rudolph, you know those, but I, none of those have been on there. So all right. So we'll go back to damage, give him one more chance. This is it. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to run the board there, damage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm, I'm I'll give I, you I'll give you a, I'll give you a clue. It's the name of a hotel franchise. Uh, all the traveling you do. You can't... Yeah. Bingo! He pulls it out. That's it. <laughs> I, that's a movie. Nineteen nineteen forty two. Uh, well, what? Who are people? these people? They they surveyed. This one an Oscar. Age this one an Oscar. This was immortalized by Bing Crosby. White Christmas was played and was sung in this movie, Holiday Inn, 1942. Huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's, what's it, six to, six to five, six to five right now. So six to five and a half. So if you can get this one, you win. Brian, you just need one movie and you win. Well, I couldn't even have gotten that one if you wouldn't have included, given me the clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Luckily, I didn't say Motel Six. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they leave the light on for you, though. Are these all like old, old? Nothing from the eighties. There's one from two thousand three, and it's uh, let's see, and it stars uh, Richard Curtis. The frick is Richard Curtis. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go with. There's one. There's. I'll give you the year. So there's one in 2003. There's one movie from 1939. There is one from 1944, starring Judy Garland. <clears throat> I, I would. Yeah, I wouldn't know any of those. All right, so let's just go in order of the movie. So let's go in order. So number 15 was Holiday Inn. Came out in 1942. Number 14 was Die Hard. Came out in 1988. A Christmas Carol came out in 1951. The Polar Express came out in 2004. One of my classic favorites, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, came out in 1989. This should have been number one. I'm with you there, Shannon. The Santa Claus came out in 1994. Elf came out in 2003. Home Alone came out in 1990. That's number eight. Number seven, The Nightmare Before Christmas, which came out in 1994. And the movie that you guys did not get was called Love Actually. I never heard of it. Uh, oh, I've heard of that. Came out in 2003. Yeah. Richard Curtis is a multi-character comedy. He's now becoming a perennial holiday tradition for romance-minded adults. So. And then this movie came out in 1939 called The Shop Around the Corner. One of the great uh, film romances of all time. That's why no one's heard of it. <laughs> well, everybody heard of it is no longer with us. 
Uh, number four is The Miracle on 34th Street. Came out in 1947. And then The Christmas Story was, was 1983. And Meet Me in St. Louis came out in 1944. And It's a Wonderful Life is number one. Came out in 1946. So the final score was Brian Schenker, six. Brian Damage, four side five. And it's Elf, a half. And so, congratulations! <laughs> You're 2022 champion for top 15 movies, there, Brian Shanker. <laughs> awesome. Hey, don't. Hey, when I went through that list, I'm like, there's no. I I haven't watched half these movies. I'm like, well, do I gotta I gotta go watch them now because I need to find out a classic. I mean, I yeah. I, I and Brian, good pull for Holiday Inn. Have you ever seen that movie, Holiday Inn? Uh, if I have, I didn't know what, was, what the title was. <laughs> so I was <laughs> yeah, I mean the fact that it was uh, Bill Cr Bing Crosby and, as and Fred Astaire and Virginia Dell. Uh, so man, three three huge uh, actors and actresses at that time. Um, the, the this re the movie was about the retiring couple decided to turn their farm into an entertainment retreat called Holiday Inn. Um, whose gimmick is that it will be open to the public on holidays, which would work out fine if only Ted didn't carry a torch for, for Lilia. The film works well with wonderful vocals from Crosby and spectacular dancing from Fred Astaire, even though there is a cringeworthy section involving a cringeworthy number and black face, still the film introduced White Christmas, so we should be grateful for that. So there you have it. Speaking of grateful, let's we're gonna we're gonna continue the uh, Christmas quiz time, uh, and we'll do the top ten. And Shannon, you can participate in this too. The top ten funny things to be thankful for. So, top ten funny items or things that you are thankful for. So, don't even whatever comes to your head. Would, Just, wouldn't wouldn't this be more of a personal preference, though? Well, I, well, that's up to you. I mean, we're going to find out. But, uh, I'm just wondering how they can make a list of them. Okay, go ahead. So no, so <laughs> well, go ahead. We're we'll we'll it's, it's ten of them. So we'll we'll let you guys, Shanker, since you won, uh, yeah. you can go first or last, whichever you choose to do. I, I'll go last, unless you give us a, an example, then I'll go first. <laughs> Okay, I'll give you an example because it's 25 is on the, the other top 25, but we're only going to do the top 10. On okay. the list of top 25, duct tape is number 12. What was it? Duct tape and good hair days is number 13. So That's... I will tell you, now this list, I'm not 100% certain is that good because bacon's number 16. Yeah, bacon should be higher up on that list. This is funny stuff. Yes, bacon. <laughs> that's on. That's the eye. Hey, seventeen is fortune cookies with perfectly timed fortunes. Uh, so, and then eighteen is cat videos. Just so you know, so it's that kind of craziness. So, whatever comes in your head, just well, just, cat videos. I can see. <laughs> just, uh, just say it. <laughs> All right. So, Brian Shaker, you uh, defer to Mister Forsyth, correct? Or do you want to go? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I, I, I'm at a loss. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, God. It's got to be funny, oh, huh? Just, just say anything. It doesn't matter what it is. Something that you just, that you, every day that you use or utilize that is not really that serious, but something that we greatly appreciate. <laughs> All right, I'll go. Matching socks. I'm going to give it to you, fuzzy socks, but I'm going to give that to you. Okay. And this is a funny list? <laughs> Brian, I'm, funny things to be thankful for, yes. It's not necessarily going to be funny, but it's not necessarily serious either. So, I'm no, I see what you mean. Okay, okay. Sorry. Hey, just disappeared in Shanker. Where'd you go? There he is. I'm, I'm here. All You're right. disappearing into your background. <laughs> so, all right. So, what's, so hey, keep going. You got that one correct. So, continue on. A lump of coal. Uh, that did not make the top 10. Let's see if it made the top 25. No, didn't make the top 10. All right. 
Damage your go. Um, funny things that I'm thankful for. Um, oh God, why am I like blanking on stuff? Um, it's difficult. I know. I know it is. I will give you a clue. You have it in your kitchen right now. Coffee. Well, that should be on the list. It's not, but uh, damn, go on. That didn't even make the top twenty-five. That's crazy. All right, this list is. Both. But that's not funny. That's yeah, serious. That's, yeah, that's that's yeah. That's serious business. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen. I'm not going to drag us through this. I'm going to give Brian Sh Brian Shanker. You, you got one. You got your eyes lit up. You got one, Santa. No, no, All not right. at all. So let me give you, let me give you guys the list. This list is as funny as it is true. Whether it's the appreciation for your crazy mismatched socks or the sound your TV makes when it turns on, sometimes it's the comically small things that makes us all happy. Number one, funny thing to be thankful for, which is not funny, Brian. I'm going to go with you on that. Indoor plumbing. <laughs> Number two. Well, some, sometimes they ma it makes funny sounds. Well, that's true. <laughs> Num number two, food delivery services. Number three, which makes this show possible, Wi-Fi. Okay. Four, naturally missing every crack in the pavement. <laughs> number five. You understand that one, Brian? When people sometimes walk on the sidewalk, they there's a what's that? There's a is it bad luck if you step on the crack? Is that the break your mama's back or something like that? Yeah, something like that. Step on a crack. Yeah. Yeah. Number five, happy hours. Number six, Netflix. Number seven, waking up seconds before your alarm goes off. Number eight, fuzzy socks. Number nine, deodorant. And number 10, the ability to Google any question. Are you good, Brian? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's it. So, Mr. Shanker, before I know you got to roll out of here, let's uh, let's turn to some serious business for, for a while and talk about those meat deals that are out there for all us carnivores and people on the keto lifestyle. Can go out and appreciate during the holiday season. What what do you got for us? I've, I've got a lot of deals. So all the deals run through the twenty seventh, December twenty seventh. So I won't won't mention that when we switch from store to store. So first up, Food Lion, and I'm going outside the box. These are going to be a lot more than just beef. Um, Food Lion has shank portion hams on sale for eighty nine cents a pound, or a spiral cut ham for ninety nine cents a pound. So they're charging you 10 cents to cut it for you in a spiral. They've got sliced bacon packages, 16 ounce packages. That's one pound for $3.99 a pound. That's a pretty good price. Price, yeah. Um, and then they also have some choice grade bone in standing rib roast for $6.77 a pound. And a Purdue oven stuffer chicken roaster. It's a whole chicken for $1.49 a pound. I've seen the Food Lion brand as low as 99 cents a pound at the same time. They have frozen turkeys for 99 cents a pound and a choice grade bottom yeah, round. Hey, how much are the unfrozen turkeys? They don't have any unfrozen turkeys, but another store that I'm going to talk about does. Okay. At least they didn't have any in the ad. Maybe they do, but the, the frozen turkeys, 99 cents, and then a the bottom round roast for $5.99. Um, Aldi's got a couple of deals going. They've got an Appleton Farms spiral sliced half ham at 95 cents a pound and a Thomas Farms fresh grass fed chuck roast for $6.49 a pound. And then a Tyson fresh pork sirloin roast for $1.79 a pound. And now here's what's been our favorite store throughout the year. Um, Harris Teeter, they've got their bone in ranch grade rib roast or steaks for $6.99 a pound or the choice grade version of that. Again, it's bone in rib roast or steaks for $7.99 a pound. And they do have fresh and frozen turkeys, both at 99 cents a pound. So if you want to run out, they've got a lot of other poultry deals. I just had so much today. I didn't want to kill us with chicken. So 
but fresh or poultry, fresh or frozen turkeys, 99 cents a pound. Yeah, Jimmy, then, you need to re up on your turkeys, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> I've still got four. I don't need any. Uh, got but four. you don't want to thaw one out. You're, you want to go get a fresh one, right? Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so um brian for you down at kroger they've got a spiral the kroger spiral sliced ham for a dollar 99 or the shank portion ham for a dollar 69 and they also have some ribeye roasts for um, bone-in choice grade at 797 a pound but they have a two dollar digital coupon bringing it down to 597 a pound and then giant foods they always have rib roasts and stuff on sale around the holidays or around thanksgiving and and uh and christmas time and and so i don't know exactly their ad doesn't come out for another day or so so you know you just check them out but food lion has something for you and harris teeter so if you got one of them kroger so if you got one of those and you're looking for the rib roasts those are the places to go and here comes brian going to show off his rib roast well, I only got a small one this time. But... Ooh, that's that a small half, one. Was that half off? Um. Well, it had, this was. What's a digital coupon? You got to have, to have the, um, the savings card and the app. Oh, okay, then then I got it for whatever you said it was because this uh, this is this price was for the seven ninety seven. So I guess it knocked off another. Two dollars a pound. Yeah. This was forty-two. Wow, this. that's great. That's a good deal. Yeah. Those giant there's their digital coupon headed down to six, I think six forty seven, <laughs> seven ninety nine a pound, and then six forty seven with a digital coupon. Yeah. I'm not good with coupons unless it, they're automatic like that. So luckily it was. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think you got to spend like a giant. I think you got to spend twenty five dollars. Got to yeah. spend twenty five dollars. Well, these a, days, that's easy. I never, I never spend less than a hundred. Yeah, it, <laughs> it, it, listen, it's 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 easy to spend twenty five dollars these days. Yeah, I I remember you could buy a whole bag of groceries for like twenty five bucks, and now it's like buy a few things and it's like a hundred bucks. I'm like, what? <laughs> I can remember back in the day when I. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember when they paid you to put gas in your car. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, you didn't even need to get out of your car. That's when you had service with service. Uh, what else you got for us, Santa? That's it. Those those are all the deals. Awesome. Well, listen, you guys can check out uh, Brian Schenker on the Meat Tribe YouTube channel. He's always giving deals there and on his uh, Facebook page. So, Brian, glad to have you back. Glad to finish off. 2022 with you and uh awesome we'll see you uh next Friday, hopefully yes definitely so merry christmas happy hanukkah happy holidays hopefully i covered everything and didn't offend anybody perfect <laughs> you did offend me so it's, it's all good in my world all right guys have a good holiday take, right, care. take care merry christmas to you and your family yeah. same to you guys thanks all right so what do you guys got planned for uh this christmas weekend brian uh we're flying to minneapolis Minneapolis going to go see Shannon's family, huh? Yeah, and the freezing cold. But actually, it's going to be freezing cold here. Yeah, it's supposed to be, uh, I think, tomorrow night or Friday night, it's supposed to be minus two here in, uh, in Virginia. Well, well, they're calling for Thursday night, like overnight Thursday, uh, sleet and snow and, and wind chill factors down to minus 20 degrees wow yeah that arctic cold's coming through i just i uh i spent the morning uh stacking wood about a half a cord on our back porch because from here on out it's supposed to be just brutally cold and i know in billings montana i heard tonight in billings montana so if you're out there in billings montana man dress appropriately i think it's supposed to be minus this is not wind chill minus 27 degrees is the low the wind chill i think it's minus 47 or 63 some crazy number it's like um, the north pole <laughs> yeah i mean only thing i listen i can't imagine if you're you're probably numbed at minus 27 so the wind chill after that probably doesn't even matter you're probably frozen if you're out there in that weather so but yeah uh, they tell you that they tell you not to stay out like there's a time limit or you end up with frostbite and yeah yeah, yeah run fast so 
if if you're in Billings, Montana, you know, let your pets in and you wise make sure you bring your husbands in too because they get cold as well. So um, yeah, I wonder. I always wonder how like the deer and all that how they survive that, but I guess they do. They do. I mean, you can't nature. Nature knows what they're doing, so if they're able to. Uh, I know because you know people get their dogs, and I, I'm saying this because. Uh, we got our grand dog over here today and our daughter went out and bought her a sweater. So she's got this coat. And I was just thinking, what happens to the animals out in the wild? Like, you know, no one goes out and buys them a coat. Like, you know, <laughs> and they, at the at the horse farms, people put blankets on their horses and, you know, they're wild animals. At least you know, they used to be. I mean, I know there's domesticated ones, but. Uh, speaking of, yeah, speaking of wild animals, my, um, my uh, deer cam has been picking up all kinds of stuff out there in my yard. I have uh, what just you over. Yeah, what do you huh? got? You got you. Uh, we know you got deer. You probably got your armadillo. Is it still out there? Yeah, I haven't caught uh, that. Actually, doesn't get caught on the camera. But there's a buck with these nut. This nice uh, right. these animals that that it's been hanging around every night. It comes around. Um, in addition to the other deer, but. Uh, even just last night there was a there was a dog on there there was a fox on there there was a cat on there a raccoon me, um there was something else that i could not identify because it's a infrared so i it, it reverses colors so right. sometimes it's hard to tell what i'm looking at but it could have been a raccoon or it could have been i don't know maybe even a skunk i'm not sure yeah. I mean, they they definitely travel at night. They're nocturnal, so. Yeah, I could have sworn I, I got a little faint smell of skunk last night at some point, but it was real, real faint, so I don't know. It could have been one just walking through. <laughs> yeah, I, I've never seen a skunk here, but every, every sometimes in the morning they've gone through, I've smelled them. They've definitely been through here. I've never, ever seen one. Matter of fact, the only time I've ever actually seen a, 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 a live Scott was in Cal in San Diego, California, in Old Town. They'd be running, they'd be walking around the our, the hacienda there in Old Town, San Diego. They'd be walking around. I'm like, what the heck are these skunks out here in daylight for? I'd never seen one until. So. Yeah, we used to have them around when I was out in California. That that house out there, there was skunks. And then I back when Sushi was still alive, I'd take her for walks, and she she'd always she never learned when it came to skunks. Oh, no. <laughs> And there, there was one they would show up on our back patio and she'd go chase and then i go sushi and then i'd have to close the door so she couldn't come back in <laughs> she'd get sprayed Did you have a bather in uh tomato paste or ketchup or whatever that nah i just i would just give her a regular bath and or let it fade but yeah that stuff th those are all like uh all those those um remedies they don't even even my uh the when i was working at the pet clinic the one vet brought his dog in that had been sprayed and i forget what he used was it vinegar or something it didn't work it just made it worse actually <laughs> like none of those things work yeah i i actually we we did we did one of our basset hounds but i think our our daughter she just uses shampoo when something happens to one of the dogs now it just gives them a i mean you can yeah, it, it gets rid of most of it. There's like a little faint bit left, but it's never anything terrible. But when they're like directly, I mean, I got, I've been sprayed by a skunk, so I know what it smells like, like direct. And it, it doesn't even smell the same when you're, when it's right on you. So how did, tell, tell us this story, how you got sprayed by a skunk. I've never been sprayed by a skunk. So did you follow sushi or did you just do it, take it upon yourself to go? follow and chase after the skunk no this was this was back when i was in, still in high school okay uh, i was uh oh it was one of those it could have been this could have been a a challenge yeah it was, it was one of these adventures where uh, uh it's a long story <laughs> but uh basically i uh my, my my father was this was when i lived in frederick and there's the co the hood college where my father taught and i was going to meet my father after school so oh you share I mean, this story i remember this you shared this story and you walked home or had yeah yeah so anyway yeah long story short i 
I, I didn't take the bus home. So I went to meet my father and he forgot. <laughs> so, and, and this is back before cell phones or any of that. And I remember trying to call and find out where he was and my mother didn't know where he was. And so I ended up walking the, the whole way home and it was like, I mean, it was miles and miles, but there was all kinds of stuff on the way. Somebody gave me a ride on their bike, but they didn't take me the way I was going to walk. So it was made it even longer. And so by the time I got to my, we, we lived back this like quarter mile lane. So by the time I got to that point, it was already dark. And I, I started walking up my lane and my dog came to meet me. And this was a dog named Zappa that we had. He's like a border collie shepherd, kind of like sushi actually, but the male version. And he came to meet me and we're walking up the lane and I'm like, ah, oh, finally I'm home. And at one point he veers off and runs into the bushes. And I couldn't even see it, but I felt it. It ran right across my feet and it was a skunk. And it was like this warm cloud engulfed me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man. And my poor dog, my dog was running. And he was he was turning his head upside down and dragging his nose in the dirt <laughs> and clawing at his at the roof of his mouth. Um, but yeah, so that was not pleasant. And it just happened to be Thanksgiving weekend you know and i'm late for dinner and i come walking into the house smell like a skunk. So do your parents say get back out there and you're not coming in until you get that smell off of you i think i had to go take a shower or something real quick before i could come to dinner but oh my gosh yeah <laughs> yeah well see like that's what happens when you get sprayed by a skunk or yeah you just you you will not forget it no and and yeah and because i don't mind like in fact i like the way you know the skunk smell like if you're driving down the road and you smell it it's like it doesn't bother me but but getting sprayed directly is completely another thing it, it's not even the same it's crazy how that that smell when it dissipates i guess it's the same with like say a perfume even when somebody first sprays a perfume usually it's like oh oh and then you smell it when it's faded and it's a it's a different story well, I think that's why you're not supposed to put so much oil. I like, I think there's yeah. you know, just put a, a little dab of do you for real. Uh, and then yeah. Maybe, and then it doesn't yeah. really, it, yeah. But, then it sm smells way better later. Right. Because it's meant to attract, but if you put, you overdo it, it repels. So, <laughs> yeah. Because there's plenty of people who, I mean, I'm, this goes for both sexist men and women, because there's been plenty of places that men have put so much cologne on, like you just have to like be running away from them when they come by you. Yeah, I had a coworker when I was at that pet clinic and the, uh, the back of the clinic was where the, uh, where the um, kennels were, and, but it was open, like the roof was open. But, you know, it was enclosed, but it was, op the roof was open. And I remember my, my coworker would arrive and I could smell him getting out of his car. And that was across the parking lot. And I was insane. Yeah. See, but I, I've got, I've got a dog's nose. So that's, that's not, that's not good. When you put that, yeah. on, I mean, some people literally bathe themselves in it. So that's not good. No. And especially he's got a you know, deal with animals and they're more sensitive than even me. <laughs> and it would, it was like, man, it, like I always knew when he arrived, like, oh, okay, he's uh, here. <laughs> well, so you guys are, you guys are heading out for the weekend and in, in a very cold climate. And uh, mm -hmm. when, you, when you come back, what's, well, what's the temperature supposed to be in Nashville? I think it's pretty much the same as it is up there. So so you know, it's gonna be cold no matter where you were, so it doesn't really yeah. matter. Yeah, I don't know what it is before wind chill. Let me see if I can see what the forecast is here. I got this little weather app um, daily. Now, now, did you mail your cookies, or are you packing your cookies and believe, bringing them with you on board? Yeah, I'm, I'm bringing the ones for her family. I, I mailed the other ones out, but uh, yeah oh, okay friday's gonna be 11 degrees here i think that's the lowest that's not too bad 11 <laughs> yeah but what's the wind chill that's the that's the low what's the wind chill that's gonna be close to zero well that's the one where overnight it's it's down to 20 below so wow the, the wind chill. wow well everybody stay warm out there and uh you know talking about being grateful for 
um, this Christmas and, and, and on a serious matter um, is I've been reading so many studies. And I think I might have sent you this last one, Brian, um, about is keto good for the brain? Um, and I've been reading plenty of ones lately. Um, and so, if you know, I know we talked about the uh, the brain energy book by Dr. Chris Palmer, I think it is. Yeah, yeah. But this person uh, posted the question, is keto good for the brain? And she says, our son was diagnosed with bipolar disorder at age 19. He had five hospitalizations, 41 uh, clinicians prescribed 29 different medications for this guy, for her son. After five years, he started a keto diet. This is this is unbelievable. And his bipolar went into remission. Two years later, he has zero symptoms and is thriving and is on no medication. So yeah. I I truly don't know what it's going to take for the establishment to truly recommend a lifestyle that's meant for you to heal both mentally and physically. I know we say that all the time, but it's story after story after story that comes out. And it's just, it's, it's hard not to like, why is this being squashed? I mean, wow. it's, well, we know he's being squashed, but I mean, but seriously, how can you seriously live with yourself? How can you, when you have, when you have that knowledge to knowing what you're peddling out there, it's not good for the masses. And yet you keep peddling it. I just don't know how you're able to the, be part of that. Like, don't you feel like you're part of human mankind, human beings, part of the world? Don't you feel connected and to be poisoning when you have the ability to provide solutions? It's just, it's, it's, it's tragic that the establishment that people go to. Is well, the because the system is based on profit, you know, that that's the, bad part about it um, when it comes to you know like the medical system and all that stuff it that it shouldn't well nothing that's the that's the downfall to every system that's falling down right now is is it's all profit based and when 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 it's based on that it you know the true meaning of it like healthcare, there's it it, it has nothing to do with your health anymore it, it, that you know that doesn't even matter <laughs> it's yeah. crazy yeah you know talking about you know greed and you know we, we talked about you brought this up last week brian like christmas time it's become such a consumer holiday like you're made to feel guilty if you don't go out and buy gifts for everybody that you know both for family and friends and it just becomes you know it really just becomes debtor's prison. Like they put most Americans into debtor's prison because they spend, they max out their credit cards and then come January, you know, they got to dig themselves out of the debt they put themselves in. And it's all because of guilt. And the people who are putting that guilt on you are the ones who are benefiting uh, from you literally living out that guilt when there's so many more things to truly be thankful for um, that goes beyond what you're buying or what you've done or what you've spent. You know, I had a good friend of mine ask me yesterday, he goes, he asked me, hey, what do they say when someone dies, when you go to their, what, are, what does people say? I said, I, I don't know, rest in peace? He's no, but when they're like, they're giving their eulogy. What do they say about somebody? And uh, I said, well, they typically say you're a good person. You know, this person, he goes, he goes, no, he's like, he's if I was giving your eulogy, this is what I would say about you. Man, Jim, I've had some of the the biggest laughs with Jim. When Jim would walk into a room and we get together, some of the biggest gut busting laughs was with Jim. I'm truly gonna miss the laughter that he brought into my life and into my world. Never do they say, Oh, man, Jim made a great stock investment and he made millions of dollars or what they never talk about what you make or what you did or what it's always about how you made someone feel like what and that's the thing about musicians like people i think are big fans of musicians because it's their music that inspires them something that comforts them inspires them helps them through a situation they can relate through it so it's how you make an individual feel 
which is the reason why people love music of all types, because every music is different to the individual. And I, I think if we could somehow get back to what really matters, like I say this all the time, like human beings are the only creatures that pay to live here on this planet. Like we just don't no longer know how to be because we've let the world make us believe we got to go do this, go do that instead of just being. And, and it's our being that we get a chance to hear, you know, that intuition, that, that that voice and and allows us to be inspired like you know how you you come up with a guitar riff i don't have that in me that doesn't come in me i don't know how to play a guitar i could learn maybe but it take a lifetime to do that but you know i have other gifts that come to me and so i i think we get so caught up with what others are thinking about us especially during this season what are they going to think about us we think we we put way too much weight on what the establishment is 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 saying they have our health and 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 care in their hands like they want to make sure you're healthy instead of us taking all that back and uh you know that's one of the things that i'm just grateful for um this time of year is the fact that that by living this lifestyle out i'm just so grateful that you know for uh for Jay Ashton is the one that first brought it to my attention. The, 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 uh, the Ak- Ak- Atkins diet back in 96 or whatever it was that he brought it to me and it worked, you know, but like you say, Brian, I'm, I'm just too stupid at times in my life. Not that you say that I'm saying this about myself. My, 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 myself is my gluttony self goes back to, to the trough and goes back to my bad habits. And it's not until I really innately knew that the only way I was going to be healthy and thrive going into my fifties and sixties and beyond is to live that lifestyle that I experienced true energy and true health. It wasn't going to be because of a piece of paper that said I had health insurance or that's, that's the misnomer. As you say all the time, true health insurance is, is you taking responsibility for what you're putting in your mouth and the health and the lifestyle that you want to live out so so this christmas season i'm just very thankful that uh, jay ashton back in 96 or whatever it was i think 2006 i mean turned me on to the atkins diet because that was the that was the seed that was planted um for me and i just wish that we somehow could convey what true health is to our children so as they're growing up they are not persuaded by the yo-yos or the, not the yo's or whatever those things are called. The host. Oh. What's that, Brian? Help me out here. Uh, Ho-hos? Ho-hos. Yes, that's <laughs> right. Ho-hos. Thank you. And Twinkies. Ho-hos. Twinkies. All yeah, all that stuff. Oreo cookies, the fried, you know, and they keep making it worse. Fried Twinkies, fried Oreos. And while those all sound great when you're an addict to that food group, um, when you break away from it, you just realize that they're nothing but a license to poison your body, a license to get you sick. And, and it I, isn't even food. It's it's like it's not nothing no nothing nutritious about that. <laughs> yeah, well, didn't they you say did they do a experiment with a hostess Twinkie? They that that thing would just sit out there and for hundreds of years. It's like it doesn't even. Oh, like, they do that with they've done that with a yeah with um with a mcdonald's burger they did it with uh and then ice cream that doesn't melt because it's not really ice cream (laughs) you know it's like the margarine of ice creams like an ice cream sandwich they can just leave it out in the sun it'll get soft but it won't melt so it's just uh it's just amazing to me that uh you know you go into a store and you see all that stuff and i know we talk about this religiously or relentlessly it's not religiously we talk about this on almost every show, but that's because, you know, it's so it's so frustrating to know that we have the answer as as a as a as a society. We have the answer. We we have what we know can make the majority of people healthier. Not saying all people because everybody's different, but can make you healthier. And when I see the number of reports that are coming in from people who have been prescribed 20 different, 27 different medications by seeing all these different doctors and none of it really helps them. And yet they go 
to a keto lifestyle and to see the changes after two years, not two days, two years, uh, the changes that it makes on an individual, how they view the world, how they see and, and how they feel. It's just like people don't discount what you know. Don't discount you just because you, well, I don't have a doctor degree. I'm not, you know, I, I, I don't know. You do know, um, go with that. So Brian, what do you, what do you plan on eating on Christmas day? I'm going to switch gears to back to Christmas. What do you, what do you, what well, do you I'll be, I'll be, uh, at, uh, Shannon's, I guess it's her brother or yeah, her brother's house. So whatever they're having, I'll eat the meat portion of it. She says it'll be steak. Are you sure? Mmm, steak. So Shannon, <laughs> what will your brother tell Brian to do then? Did you hear that? No, I didn't hear it. <laughs> she said, hey, he'll say, shut up and eat your meat. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, listen, everybody, thanks for spending Friday night with us again. Uh, we hope you uh, have a great Christmas weekend, Christmas Day with your family and friends, and truly celebrate the reason for gathering together. And uh, we will look forward to seeing everybody next Friday night, same time, same place. And in the interim, stay safe, stay well, stay kind, and stay at the hospital. We'll see everybody. Merry Christmas. Yeah.